I was one of those kids who loved every minute of elementary school. Sitting quietly at a desk all day, swinging from the monkey bars at recess, even kneeling in a tiny church each morning with my eyes squeezed shut and hands pressed together at my heart, reciting Our Fathers and Hail Marys under the watchful eyes of the nuns. But by far, Wednesdays were my favorite day of the week. This was the day our third grade class coalesced into a single file line and shuffled across the street to the public library. On one such Wednesday, as the other kids scrambled for Nancy Drew novels and choose your own adventure books, I headed for the science section. I'd recently developed a fascination with aquatic animals, baby pufferfish in particular. <laughs> but something caught my eye on the way to the sea life section. A misplaced book lying face up on the shelf called where did I come from? <laughs> the puffer fish could wait. <laughs> I peeked around the corner to make sure my teacher wasn't looking and crouched down in my red corduroys and pink Michael Jackson beat it shirt. I tore through pages of zygote diagrams and renderings of babies growing in the womb before I reached the most important page of all, the one with the map of a penis. I read the penis's job description repeatedly just to make sure I didn't forget anything. <laughs> and that book was nothing if not thorough. But there was one thing my seven-year-old brain couldn't quite figure out. So when I got home from school that afternoon, I asked my mom for clarification. So mommy, when you and daddy want to make a baby, daddy has to put his penis in the freezer? Because I saw a book in the library today, and it said the man's penis has to be hard in order to make a baby. <laughs> now at this point, parents have two options. They're either going to sit the kid down and fumble through the sex talk, or they're going to brush the kid off, maybe scold them for sticking their nose where it doesn't belong, and hope to God they can postpone the sex talk for a few more years. My mom chose option three, skipping right over human anatomy and reproduction and heading straight into masturbation. <laughs> she told me when she was about my age, she had a neighbor who used to lie down under the bathtub faucet and let the water run over her vagina. But why, Mommy? I asked. <laughs> well, honey, she just liked how it felt down there. I walked away from this conversation, still thinking freezers were involved in pregnancy, <laughs> and feeling like I really needed to take a bath. <laughs> that very same night, I locked the bathroom door behind me for the first time ever, turned on the water, scooted my bottom up to the faucet, planted my feet squarely against the cold mauve tile and laid back, letting curiosity run its course. And run it did. I was in love with myself. I started taking baths every night, sometimes twice a day, once at night before bed and sometimes before school in the morning if I'd slept hot. Over the next several months, as my relationship with faucets blossomed, <laughs> my mom continued with my sex ed whenever an opportunity presented itself. One day, a classmate named Timothy Bischel tried to hold my hand on the Foursquare Court. So I punched him in the chest, and he called me a blowjob, and we both got sent to Principal McGiven's office. A wooden paddle with nine tiny holes hung from a rope on the wall next to his desk. I braced myself for some good old-fashioned corporal punishment. But instead, he called my mom to come pick me up in the middle of the day, and I was sure that extra chores, or at least a time out, was in store. Sweetie, my mom said, do you know what a blowjob is? <laughs> she explained the entire procedure in great detail and didn't stop there. <laughs> Guess what, honey? Boys do it to girls, too, only using a very different technique. But as open and honest as my mom was about sex, she was equally as resolute in her opposition to me participating in it. 
She told me over and over again about her friend Karen, who'd ruined her life by getting pregnant in high school just by making out with a boy who had an erection. <laughs> they were both wearing panties at the time. But that doesn't matter, Jen, because the caustic stuff is always seeping out of the penis. And all it takes is one drop to get you pregnant, give you a disease, or break your heart. And do you know why this happens, sweetie? Because God doesn't want you to have sex out of wedlock. When you're seven, you tend to believe everything your parents tell you, even bullshit stories that amount to immaculate conception. And because I was an overachiever, I took my mom's admonitions to an extreme, vowing to not even look at a boy until I was ready to get married. As I entered junior high, I fancied myself superior to all the other teenagers who were making out behind the handball court after school and playing spin the bottle at parties. I was following God's rules. But I'd also started feeling anxious about missing out on normal teenager life. I'd overhear my parents talking in hushed tones late into the night. My dad, who didn't know my mom and put the fear of God into me, would whisper, do you think she's a lesbian? <laughs> no, my mom would reassure him. I think she's just a late bloomer. Little did they know, my vagina had been in full bloom for five years. <laughs> I'd also hear my parents complain about the water bill, but their little girl. <laughs> their little girl was never to blame. What do you expect with two teenage boys in the house, my mom would say. By the time I started high school, I had grown so worried about my lack of experience with boys that I agreed to go to the movies with a classmate named Michael Olson. Halfway through the movie, he clumsily reached for my hand, which I was purposely sitting on to prevent this very thing from happening. <laughs> I got up, ran out of the theater, and waited outside by myself for an hour until my mom picked me up. Everyone at school was at least making out, even the Mormon kids and my moral superiority gave way to social inferiority. I couldn't stand it anymore, and I began to hate God. So I allowed myself to acknowledge that I was attracted to boys, but I decided not to tell my mom, and especially not to tell her that the only use I had for God was to beg him to make the boy who sat next to me in Spanish class, Ryan Rex, French kiss me. Maybe touch my boobs under the bleachers during a football game. As I entered my junior year, I transitioned from masturbating only to making out only, but made sure to wear very thick pants. <laughs> and just in case, I stuck with Mormon kids because everyone knew they only had fake sex in the mouth or in the butt. And then my dream came true. Ryan Rex was having a party. And my older brother was invited, which meant I was invited too. I drank an entire bottle of Boone's Farm Strawberry Hill <laughs> and asked my friend to ask, ask Ryan if he wanted to make out. His parents owned the only backyard barn in Orange County, and we made out on a bale of hay, retainers and braces clanking together his right hand rigid and motionless against my breast. <laughs> when we were done, I begged Jesus to make me not pregnant, <laughs> even though I hadn't even gotten my first period yet. I went off to college promising my mom I'd go to church every Sunday and say my prayers at night not let boys into my dorm room, and that I'd wait for marriage because that's what God wanted me to do. But what I really did was spend most of my Sundays and every other day for that matter, praying for my neighbor to knock on my door, different Ryan this time, take me upstairs into my extra long twin bed and fuck me all night. 
God must have heard my prayers. <laughs> because Ryan did come knocking, and upstairs we went. But when our clothes came off, I froze frightened of what God would do to me. And on this night, I started a habit that would last well into adulthood, blowing every guy I hooked up with to avoid having sex. Sometimes I would go to church on Sundays like I'd promise, but come home furious and frustrated, and the shitty water pressure in the dorms certainly didn't help. <laughs> I drove home almost every weekend because I missed my friends, but also because my parents had installed a top-of-the-line shower head from Home Depot. <laughs> Everything changed when I returned to college from winter break my freshman year. That's when I met John, a dead ringer for Top Gun era Val Kilmer. He was 10 years older than me, and I worshipped him because he'd made it halfway through Navy SEAL school. We were totally in love, and he was definitely the one. After our first date at California Pizza Kitchen, we went back to my dorm room, where I was babysitting my roommate's tarantula, and John told me he was willing to wait forever for me to be ready to have sex, even if it meant holding out for marriage. Three hours later, <laughs> I lost my virginity. My body ached to enjoy every second of it, but my mind wouldn't allow me to relax. And not just because the tarantula had escaped from its tiny plastic prison cell. I was still terrified to come down with a pregnancy, even though I had gotten on the pill a few months earlier for an irregular period. So I made John wear a condom. And just to be on the safe side, I made him pull out. I became fixated on apologizing to God and begging him to forgive me as I lay in bed at night. It's just this one guy. And I'm going to marry him someday. I vowed to stay faithful to John when he shipped off to Japan with the Navy for the next two years. And though my heart was loyal, my vagina was not. <laughs> And when I met a dreamy Ecuadorian Catholic boy named Bernardo, I again told God, just this one other guy. It's okay. He's Catholic. <laughs> but every time our clothes came off, instead of the sexual bliss all my friends were raving about, I felt nothing but guilt and shame. I couldn't stop thinking about the promise I'd made to my mom and felt sure God was going to pregnancy punish me just like he did with my mom's friend, Karen. <laughs> I found sex to be so physically painful that I resorted back to oral sex only. I even went to Planned Parenthood to find out if I had a defective vagina. But they assured me my pain was psychosomatic and recommended that I see a therapist. And then I met Anthony. After the first time we had sex, I knew I was in trouble. I'd never been addicted to drugs, but I was immediately addicted to that penis. <laughs> and there's no rehab for that. My neighbors complained to my landlord about the noise. I missed classes, failed exams, called in sick to work, and got two speeding tickets in a six-week period racing to his house at night. And I knew it was time for a break from detachable shower heads <laughs> and exclusively oral sex and the God my mom had used to try to shield me from the world. I let myself fall hopelessly in love with Anthony, even though I knew from the very beginning that he would break my heart, mostly because we were way too young to sustain a grown-up relationship, but also because he used to make out with other girls in front of me at parties. <laughs> But I was undeterred, because for the first time ever, sex brought me pleasure instead of pain, ecstasy instead of guilt, and love instead of fear.
That was Jen Stiff.